Hello, everyone. I'm Tyson Hamilton. Uh, that's my Twitter handle there. You can find me there. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Google. I work on Apache Beam and on some of the internal stuff. Uh, one of the runners for Apache Beam, uh, Google Cloud Dataflow. So in this talk, we're going to be um, going through what it means to describe a pipeline declaratively and the DAG, which is a directed acyclic graph, which is um, it's the representation of a pipeline that Apache Beam uses. It's an abstraction layer, but we'll get into that in a bit more detail shortly. Uh, if you have questions, type them up. I'll try and answer them during the presentation. I might wait till the end so I don't lose my train of thought. Uh, let's get started. So real world data processing and, and data engineering solutions are typically not one step transforms. They're a complex interconnected um, set or series of pipelines. And you can look at this slide and kind of imagine asking one of your fellow colleagues like a reliability engineer to debug a hundred plus or thousand plus stage MapReduce pipeline um, or trying to ramp up on a team that has one of these pipelines and, and trying to understand the logic, the business logic of a pipeline like this. Um, MapReduces can get up to thousands of stages. Right, and MapReduce works well for computations that can be broken down into a map step, a shuffle step, and a reduce step. But for many of these real world computations, a chain of MapReduces would be required. And these types of um, pipelines require additional coordination to chain them together. So there's a lot of logic and, and glue code to make all of these MapReduces stick together to represent a single pipeline. And all that extra code kind of obscures the business logic. There's a lot of low level coordination details, making sure that some output is written before another pipeline starts. Um, and, and a lot of the business logic will get lost in, in this glue code. And it kind of makes it difficult to ramp up or debug um, and even just understand what a pipeline is doing. And the other downside that we experienced in Google, and I'm sure others have out there when using MapReduce, is that these stages become baked in. Um, the glue code bakes them in, it's coupled, and it makes it difficult to change the computation logic later uh, as your business needs evolve. Well, what's the solution to that? It's the DAG. The DAG is a uh, directed acyclic graph and that just means that um, nodes have edges that have a direction in which data will travel. Um, it's acyclic, so there's no cycles allowed, and it's a graph. Um, this representation becomes important uh, for some optimizations because we can, runners and Apache Beam can make assumptions based on the characteristics of that data structure. Uh, I'll, I'll show some of those later. But this is an example of a DAG. You can see it looks like a pipeline. It's kind of describing what is happening, not how it happens. And on the left, it's the DAG. And on the right might be an example of how one would execute this pipeline. They look different, right? They don't look the same. Um, and, and that transformation from a DAG to an execution uh, plan is is I guess it's what we call optimization. Um, okay, so let's let's look at this a bit closer. Right, so a directed acyclic graph of data transformations applied to one or more collections of data. So the nodes are the transforms and the edges are the collections. And your um, P collections, which I think we learned about in the last presentation, cover possibly unbounded data, possibly bounded data, and it flows along the edges. Um, streaming pipelines typically have unbounded data and batch ones have bounded data. And it may include multiple sources and multiple sinks. And the pipeline or the DAG is optimized and executed as a single unit, where in contrast to the MapReduce pipeline demo uh, slide earlier, those would have all been executed um, individually separately, so not as a unit. 
So having this kind of global view of your pipeline is advantageous when performing optimizations on the on the DAG itself. So what's a pipeline? I think I've said this word a bunch of times and it's probably already been covered, but um, a pipeline is this DAG. It's not really part of the programming model. It's something you don't have to think about when you're writing an Apache Beam pipeline. It's just the, it's the abstraction layer underneath the API that enables some of these, um, these optimizations that are done by the runner in Apache Beam. So Beam represents these data sets using an abstraction called peak collection. Um, peak collection is, uh, it abstracts away a lot of the complexities of dealing with uh, largely distributed data sets. You as a user of Apache Beam get to just imagine that it's some idiomatic collection that you're um, using of whatever language you might be using like Python or Java or Go. You can just treat it like a regular in-memory collection. But under the hoods, it might be distributed across many machines. Um, maybe it's on one machine and the runner will decide to split it up across many machines, but you don't need to worry about this. That's all been abstracted away by this P collection. Data transformations are P transforms. They're the things that actually do the computation logic. They're, they're how you represent your business logic. And um, you apply transforms to P collections to transform them from one type to another or filtering them. Right? There's lots of different transformations available in Apache Beam. Okay, so let's walk through a brief example. Suppose you have a company, Acme, and you wanna find out their popular products. Um, there is potentially a lot of data. Maybe Acme is a huge company with tons of sales and it's split between two different input streams, right? So online sales and in-store sales. And we want to figure out the top products. So we want to use a pipeline to do this. We're, we're going to use Apache Beam because it's fantastic and we love it. Okay. So. First, we know we have two inputs. We've got our in-store database and our online database, and we are going to use them as sources to our pipeline. From those, which would be P collections, by the way. For those P collections, we would apply a transform to extract the IDs, a P transform. It would extract those IDs and then emit them. From that P transform that is extracting item IDs, you get another P collection. And to both of those resulting P collections, we can apply a transform called flatten, which essentially merges them into a single unified view of another P collection or represented by another P collection, right? So now we've got both the input from in-store and online. We extracted some item IDs and maybe some extra metadata flatten them into a single unified view. And then we can apply one of these other transforms that's offered by Apache Beam like count. So count, we're gonna count each item ID to get the number of sales. Or we're, depending what the data looks like, maybe um, each item ID has a number of sales with it. All right, so we're gonna count the sales, take the top, um, just another P transform that's available in Apache Beam. So these, these you can like, they're really used by just applying a transform to a P collection. So you can P collection dot apply or P collection pipe apply, depending on your language, um, any of these transforms to represent what you wanna do to the data in your pipeline, not how to do it, what, that's the declarative part. And the results will be written to BigQuery. That would be the sync of the pipeline. So we can see in this image, a really nice visual representation of data being read from these two inputs flowing through the rest of this graph down to the sync or the output. So this is where we can take a look at some of the advantages. When you looked at that last visual representation, you could concentrate on the business logic. It's pretty clear to see what is happening in that, in that graph. 
Um, there's less code because it's declarative. You don't need to worry about the glue code or, or how to execute um, that pipeline. You just need to describe what you want to do to the data. And Apache Beam abstracts away all of the difficulties of how it should be done. Um, it even performs optimizations to make sure it's done faster. Uh, you write your pipeline once. As Apache Beam improves, you get more and more optimizations over time. So um, you're getting more for your efforts the longer you're running your pipeline on Apache Beam. Um, deferred execution. This is one of the main um, benefits of having this abstraction, in my opinion, at least, is that you are calling methods declaratively. You're applying transforms to to P collections. None of it actually happens in your main program. So the method calls that you're executing are actually building up this graph, this representation um, in memory. And there's no computation happening at this point. It's just building up your graph. It's um, collecting the metadata, the transformations that you plan to use in your pipeline. It's deferring all of these executions into um, this DAG representation. And then once you call run or you um, start your, you complete building your graph, then it's passed off to a runner. And that runner performs these optimizations, right? So Fusion is an example of this, um, where you can imagine having two map reduces for applying two transforms, right? Like the flatten and the count, perhaps. Um, those could be fused together so that you don't have to write an intermediate P collection between them. Um, the DAG allows runners to make certain assumptions about how the pipeline can be executed. Uh, other restrictions on P transforms like associativity um, allow more optimizations, meaning that sometimes we can pull apart uh, a transform and execute some of it before writing and after writing. Like maybe you want to execute a filter before writing data to a shuffle. And that would mean you have to write less data to that shuffle. You have to shuffle less data as a result. Um, these are all different types of optimizations that can be done based on the assumptions we can make knowing it's a DAG knowing that associativity is required for p-transforms. Um, and also, as a fringe benefit, or just another benefit, you get contextual monitoring, troubleshooting, and logging. So what you're seeing on the left, um, it looks like how you would solve the problem you're trying to solve. So you can click on those boxes and understand what's going on and debug problems as they come up more easily. Right, so you know, obviously I talked about deferred execution before this slide came up. So just imagine replaying that stuff I said for this slide. Here is a Java example that actually goes through solving this example that we discussed. Um, maybe this one is worth going full screen, Pedro, if you wouldn't mind, please. So we have a text IO on the side that's reading from store purchases. We also have one reading from the online, right? So you can see P apply, P is the pipeline. And we're applying this text IO transform to read in the data. After that, we're applying the extract ID transform to extract the ID. Uh, and you can see we're doing the same in the next line for reading from the online purchases online database or the text file in this case, and applying the same transform. So there's some reuse there. None of these um, method calls are actually um, happening on the machine that's running them. They're preparing this DAG. They're building the DAG on the right through these method calls. Now uh, they're deferring the execution to later. Um, the next one, this P collection list is created by flattening those two previous P collections, applying the count, applying the top, applying the BigQuery write. And those are all deferred calls up until this p.run is called. And that p.run is going to send this DAG, the representation of the pipeline, over to a runner for optimizations. Right. So that's that's an example view of what I was describing there. Um, 
There we go. So now it's sending over that DAG to the managed service. Um, you know, that could be Dataflow, that could be Flink, it could be Spark, it could be on Dataproc, it could be on Amazon Kinesis. There's lots of places that have services like this. On-prem, you could be running your own Flink cluster maybe, maybe you're running your own Spark cluster. Um, and from that DAG, when the managed service receives it, it's going to create the execution plan. It's going to do its optimizations and figure out how, how many workers are needed. How many should I start spinning up? How should I split this work to distribute it across these workers? Um, are there any runtime optimizations I can do while I'm executing this that'll make it complete faster or with higher resource utilization, right? Okay, that's, that's, the, that's all the slides. So let's just briefly look at what we talked about. We looked at how, uh, how to abstract away the representation of a pipeline or the declarative business logic from how to execute or the control logic of a pipeline so that you don't need to worry about the glue. You don't need to worry about how to optimize or split or any of these things. You just worry about what happens. Um, we looked at core primitives. Um, again, I think that was a review from the previous slide. A simple example done in Java and what it means to use deferred execution. You don't need to know you're using, well, it's, it's helpful to know, but it happens kind of behind the scenes. Okay, so um, I've got a question here. By the way, if you have questions, now's a great time to ask them. The question is, can I visualize a beam DAG as I see in Dataflow in another runner or interface? Yes, of course. Um, I, I believe that, that it's either Spark or Flink has, um, can represent the graph as it's executed, but it's really, uh, it's all represented in a proto. So you can take that proto and you can represent the DAG from the proto. So, um, do we expose the proto? I'm not sure if it's exposed through standard APIs or if it's an internal one. That's something you might want to ask on um, the Apache Beam user list. 